Uh, hey guys, welcome back. Uh, welcome back to the, the, the channel. <laughs> um, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, I think. Uh, I mean, okay, it's kind of like the um, the Five Nights at Freddy's video, which which you may be familiar with if you're a, if you're an old fan of the channel. <laughs> if you're a new fan of the channel for this video, welcome. <laughs> uh, anyway, so as you can see in front of you, and from the title of the video, today I'm going to be reading the entire Zootopia script uh, with stage directions. So this is probably going to be a long video, so there might be a couple of breaks. I will try to make them as not harsh as possible. So that you can just chill through the whole video. My hair looks awful with the wind. I'm looking at my OBS to make sure that this is being picked up. Um, because I, the last thing I want is, is to do this whole video, or at least part of it, and then have nothing. But it looks like it's being picked up because I, I turned off my noise filter. But I am using NVIDIA voice, RTX voice. Shout out to RTX voice. It's, it's a really good program, actually. It makes you really sound professional in, like, Valorant. So, um, as you can see on the screen right now, and I've got the script here, and I will link it in the description, Des description below, so you can read along on your own screen if you'd like. Um, besides that, I've got a couple of glasses of water. So, I guess let's begin, I suppose. Zootopia, written by Jerry Bush and Phil Johns. I'm probably going to hold my mic. I'm probably going to, for a little bit at least. Okay. Zootopia, written by Jerry Bush and Phil Johnston. Story by Byron Howard, Rich Moore, Jerry Bush, Jim Reardon, Josie Trinidad, Phil Johnston, and Jennifer Lee. In black, we hear the feral, primeval sounds of a jungle at night. A timpani bangs an ominous beat. Fade in on a jungle night. A bunny nervously walks through the dark, foreboding forest, frightened by every shadow and moving leaf. Fear. Fear. Treachery. Bloodlust. Thousands of years ago, these were the forces that a world where prey were scared of predators, and predators had an uncontrolled biological urge to maim and maul, and the timpani crescendos. A jaguar leaps out of the shadows, attacks the bunny who screams. Up to inside a bar, a jungle set. The action continues, as imagined by an amateur stage production. Blood, blood, blood. Reams of red paper mache on frails from the bunny, and when those run out, projectile ketchup. Reveal is our animal kid actors, Bunny and Judy Alves. Ten is our hero, and this is her play being staged. A banner reads, Carrot D's talent show. And death. The crowd looks on, confused. The music goes discordant as a bobby cat mall or bobcat bangs a drum. Back then, the world was divided in two. Vicious predators into meat and prey. Two boxes drop down, labeled vicious predator and meat prey. The predator box lands on the jaguar. The meat prey box lands on Judy. Her entrails get stuck outside the box. She drags them underneath with her. But over time, we evolved and moved beyond our primitive, savage ways. A young sheep wearing white does an imp improvisational dance across the stage. Judy and the jaguar burst out of their boxes now wearing the white moves too. Now, Predator and Bunny live in harmony. Judy and the jaguar shake hands as a shikra throws glitter. And every young mammal has multitudinous opportunities. Yeah, we don't have to cower in a hood anymore. The jaguar rips off his bumper. She's made an astronaut costume. Instead, I can be an astronaut. Catmull plays a slide whistle. I don't have to be a lonely hunter anymore. Jaguar rips off his boomer. He's dressed in a suit. Today, I can hunt for tax exemptions. I'm going to be an actuary. I can make the world a better place. I'm going to be. 
Catmull plays a 70s-style cop show theme on the boombox. Judy rips off her moment over feeling a police officer uniform. A police officer. Judy's parents, Bonnie and Stu, stunned. A mean fox kid, Gideon Gray, snickers. He's sitting next to a weasel. Funny cop. That is the most stupidest thing I ever heard. It may be impossible to small minds. That would do Gideon Gray. Catmull drops down a backdrop showing a bright city skyline. He hits play an uplifting song. But just 211 miles away stands the great city of Zootopia, where my ancestors first joined together in peace and declared that anyone can be anything. Thank you and good night. Judy gives a mighty thespian bow to the sound of Catmull on the organ. The audience applauds and Judy's parents look concerned. Exterior Carrot Days Festival later that day. A festival replete with food booths, games, and rides, all aggressively carrot-themed. Judy, in her cop costume, bounces along with her folks. We catch their conversation midstream. Judy, you have to wonder how your mom and me got to be so darn happy. Nope. Well, we gave up on our dreams and we settled in Vermont. Oh yes, that's right, Stu. We settled hard. See, that's the beauty of complacency, Jude. If you don't try anything new, you'll never fail. Like driving action. And what your father means is it's going to be difficult, possible even, for you to become a police officer. There's never been a bunny cop. No. Please don't do that. Never. Never. Oh, then I guess I'll have to be the first one, because I'm going to make the world a better place. Or, um, heck, you want to talk about making the world a better place? The trio arrives at the Hobbs family farm carrot booth, which is manned by too many children to count. No better way to do it than becoming a carrot farmer. Yes, your dad, me, your 275 brothers and sisters, we're changing the world. Yep, one carrot at a time. Amen to that. Carrot farming is a noble profession. Judy spots Gideon Gray stalking some small mammals. She remains fixed on Gideon as Stu and Bonnie yap on obliviously. Just putting the seeds in the ground. Ah, oh, that one with the soil. We're back on Bonnie and Stu's conversation now. You get it. I mean, it's great to have dreams. Yeah, just as long as you don't believe in them too much. Finally noticing Judy's absence. Where the heck did she go? Across the fair, from behind a tree, Judy watches as Gideon Gray intimidates the astronaut sheep, Sharla. Give me your tickets right now, or I'm gonna kick your meek little sheep. But, ow, cut it out, Gideon. Ba ba. what are you gonna do? Cry. Gideon swipes Charlotte's fare tickets. Hey. Judy charges toward the danger. You heard her, cut it out. Gideon turns. There's Judy, projecting the image of a tiny Clint Eastwood. Nice costume, loser. What crazy world are you living in where you think a bunny could be a cop? Kindly return my friend's tickets. Gideon pats the tickets in his pocket. Come and get them, but watch out, cause I'm a fox, and like you've seen in your dumb little stage play, those predators used to eat prey, and they kill our instincts still in our dinner. <laughs> Travis the wolf has been good. Sadder though, to Gideon. Uh, I'm pretty much sure it's pronounced DNA. Don't tell me what I know, Travis. You don't scare me, Gideon. Gideon shoves Judy forward. She falls, and the other prey animals flee to safety behind a nearby tree, leaving her to face the thugs alone. You scared now? Judy starts to tear up. Her nose starts to twitch. Look at her nose twitch. She is scared. Cry, little baby bunny. Cry, cry. Suddenly, Bam! Judy kicks Giddy in the face with her hind legs. He stumbles back, but then shakes his lip for blood. Oh, you don't know when to quit, do you? He unsheathes his claw like a switchblade, then slaps her drawing blood from her cheek. She cowers, as do her scared friends behind the tree. I want you to remember this moment the next time you think you'll ever be anything more than just a stupid carrot farming. Duh, bunny. 
Damien and his pal head off, laughing and high-fiving. The prey animals run back over to Judy, who wipes the blood from her cheek. She fights tears, defeated. That looks bad. Are you okay, Judy? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Judy smiles and whips out the tickets as she gets up. Here you go. Wow, you got our tickets. You're awesome, Judy. Yeah, that Gideon Gray doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, he was right about one thing. Judy picks up the cop hat and puts it on her head. I don't know when to quit. Cut to exterior police academy training facility A. Hobbs and the comparatively huge cadets sit in a circle as a major freak in intimidating drill instructor lectures. Listen up, cadets. Zootopia has 12 unique ecosystems within its city limits. Tundra Town, Sahara Square, Rainforest District, to name a few. You're going to have to master all of them before you hit the streets. Or guess what, Dobbs? You'll be dead. In Sahara Square Simulator, Hobbs struggles through the sand, scorching sandstorm. You're dead, Bunny Bunkin, on the vine-covered monkey bars. Hobbs swings across the bars, simulating the Rainforest District. She falls off, landing face-first in the mud. One thousand foot fall. You're dead, carrot face. Touch your down ice wall. Judy and the cadets spring toward the wall. The clawed animals dig into the ice wall. Hobbs slides off. Frigid ice wall. You're dead, farm girl. In the boxing ring, Hobbs gets in the ring with a big bison. Enormous criminal. Hobbs gets punched in the nose. You're dead. Three quick sets of failure. Dead, dead, dead. In the toilet, Hobbs ruses into a stall. The toilet is considerably larger than she is. She shuts the door. We see her climb up the toilet. In the next stall, we see the feet of a hippo. Then, her splash. Hobbs falls into the toilet. Filthy toilet. You're dead to fluff, bud. Sorry. Hobbs on her own. She runs at sunset, after everyone else has called it a day. We hear the drill instructor's voice echoing in our mind. Just quit, go home, fuzzy bunny. Then those of her parents. There's never been a bunny cop. Never, never. Then Gideon's. Just a stupid, carrot-farming, dumb bunny. Over in the barracks, Hobbs stays up late studying, doing sit-ups on the ice wall. Hobbs bounds up the wall, jumps off the backs of the big animals, and makes it over, impressing the major freakin. In the ring, Hobbs dodges a few swings. The bison misses. Hobbs bounds over him and uses his momentum, kicking his other hand into his face, knocking him down. Exterior police. Academy day. It's graduation day. Mayor Lionheart at the podium. As mayor of Zootopia, I am proud to announce that my Mammal Inclusion Initiative has produced its first police academy graduate. Judy stands proudly in her cop uniform, valedictorian of her class, CPE's very first rapid officer, Judy Hobbs. Judy walks to the stage as those in attendance cheer, her family chief among them. Assistant Mayor Bellwether applauds. She smiles at Judy, lost in the moment. Clearing his throat. Assistant Mayor Bellwether, her badge. Oh, yes, right. Thank you. Bellwether steps forward to pin the Hobbs CPD badge on her. Judy, it is my great privilege to officially assign you to the heart of Zootopia, Precinct 1, City 7. Judy can barely contain her glee. Her parents are in shock. Congratulations, Officer Hobbs. I won't let you down. This has been my dream since I was a kid. No, it's a, it's a real proud day for us little guys. Bellwether, make real one. Make real William. Come on. Lionheart shoves Bellwether out of the way. Okay, Officer Hobbs. Let's see those teeth. I, I fucking love this movie, guys. I see, I've seen this movie 14 times. Minimum. Minimum. I'm pretty sure I've seen it like two or three other times after that, but I don't know the exact count, but it's 14 minimum. Civil War.
photographers name their cameras. Lionheart steps in front of Bellwether, edging her out of the photo. The flashbulbs pop. Exterior Money Burrow train station. Day, Stu, Bonnie, and several siblings accompany Judy to the train station. We are real proud of you, Judy. Yeah. Scared, too. Yes. Really, it's kind of a proud, scared combo. I mean, Zootopia, it's so far away. It's such a big city. Guys, I've been working for this my whole life. We know we're just a little excited for you, but terrified. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And also bears. We have bears to fear, too. To say nothing of lions and wolves. Wolves. Weasels. You play cribbage with a weasel, and he cheats like there's no tomorrow. You know what? Pretty much all predators and Zootopias follow the most, too. And foxes are the worst. Actually, your father does have a point there. It's in their biology. Remember what happened with Gideon Gray? When I was nine, Gideon Gray was a jerk. Happened to be a fox. I know plenty of bunnies who are jerks. Sure, yeah, we all do. Absolutely. But just in case, we made you a little care package to take with you. And I put some snacks in there. Sue begins pulling a bunch of pink fox deterrents from a bag. This is fox deterrent. Yeah, that's safe to have there. This is Fox Repellent. Okay, the deterrent and repellent, that's all she needs. Check this out. Stu removes a fox taser, fires it up, and it sizzles. Oh, for goodness sake, she has no need for a fox taser, Stu. Oh, come on, when is there not need for a fox taser? Okay, look, I will take this to make you stop talking. Judy grabs the pink fox repellent from the bag as the train moves up. Terrific, everyone wins. Arriving, Zootopia Express. Okay, gotta go, bye. Judy heads for the train, head held high. No turning back. Stu and Bonnie watch, both holding back tears. Suddenly, motion catches up with Judy. She turns, runs back to her parents, and hugs them tight. I love you guys. Love you too. One more squeeze, then Judy runs off and jumps on the train. Oh, gripes. Here come the waterworks. Oh, Stu, pull it together. Bye, everybody. Bye, Judy. I love you. Bye. As the train pulls away, her family runs next to it, waving. Bye. Judy looks back as their faces recede into the distance. The train blasts past Bunnyboro, passing its exponentially increasing population sign. Judy pulls out her phone and clicks play. Her new life is about to begin, and we... This is when... Try Everything by Shakira, or as I like to call her, Gazelle, plays. Uh, but I'm not going to play that because of copyright issues, obviously. Just imagine it, or go look it up in another tab. But put it low enough so that you can still hear this video. <laughs> Cut to a montage. As Hobbs takes the train, it rounds a curve. She looks up. Her eyes light up. There in the distance is exterior Zootopia City, establishing the unbelievable animal metropolis of Zootopia, which is comprised of amazing habitat burrows. A train whips past Tundra Town, Savannah Central, Rainforest District, Meadowlands, Sahara Square, etc. <laughs> Interior Zootopia Central Station, a little later, hops spills out of the train, now in a multi-scale environment. Everything from mice to elephants. Exterior downtown Zootopia a little later. Hops emerges into the main Zootopia Central Plaza. It's an amazing, magnificent place. A jumbotron featuring a gazelle pop star. Gazelle blares its message in a loop. I'm Gazelle. Welcome to Zootopia. Cut to interior Hops apartment building hallway. Day. Dharma Armadillo. Hops is older armadillo landlady and opens the door to Hobbs' new apartment, which we can't see yet. And welcome to the Grand Bank Golden Arms Luxury Apartments with Charm. I don't know why that sounded like Donald Trump. I'll stop that. Hobbs discovered the room is a tiny, crappy studio apartment. Complimentary deal house once a month. Don't lose your key. Thank you. As Dharma leaves, Hobbs' volatile, artsy neighbors, Kudu and Oryx, you toss her, pass by him. Oh, hi, I'm Judy, your new neighbor. Yeah, well, we're loud. 
don't expect us to apologize for it. Before Hop can respond, they're gone, leaving Hobbs alone. She looks around, blank face, so it's tough to read her emotions. Greasy walls, rickety bed. Shut up, yo, shut up. No, yo, shut up. Greasy neighbors. Big smile as she flops on the bed. I love it. As the shouting continues, she stretches out on her bed, exhausted but overjoyed. Wake up montage morning. Wake up rhythmic cuts of alarm clock. Beep, 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 beep. Dressing, vest, badge, belt. On the bedside table sits the pink fox from behind. Judy glances at it and smirks. Thinking it would be silly, she walks out of the frame. Holds on the table. One second. Then Judy's hands come back into frame and grab the repel. Interior Zootopia Police Department morning. Utter mayhem. Cops parade perps through the lobby. One is wearing cuffs and a plastic, not scary, safety muzzle. He complains to the bear, car bear cop marching him by. This is my favorite line in the entire film. I don't know why I keep looking over there. You're right there. You're here. Come on, he buried his teeth first. That one hits home. That one hits here. We land at the front desk and find the Lockhauser, a pudgy cheetah cop, happily eating a bowl of Lucky Chomps cereal. <clears throat> Sorry. Hops. I don't know why this is a mental reset. Excuse me, down here. Hi. Lockhauser leans over the desk to find Hops. Oh, my goodness. They really did hire a bunny. I gotta tell you, you're even cuter than I thought you'd be. Oh, oh, it's... You mean to know? But you can call another bunny cute. Well, other animals do it. It eats a little. Gasps, realizing. I am so sorry. Me, Benjamin Lockhauser. The guy everyone thinks is just a flat, donor-loving cop. Stereotype me, you. It's okay. Oh, you've actually got a... You've, there's a... In your neck, the fold, there's... Glyhauser removes a small donut from under some knuckle. It's neck fat. Oh, there you are, you little dickens. He scram crams the donut into his mouth. Awkwardly laughing. I should get to roll call. So, which way do I... Oh, bullpen's over there to the left. Great, thank you. Glyhauser watches admiringly as she heads to the bullpen. To himself, wistful. Oh, that poor little bunny's gonna get eaten alive. Interior CBD bullpen continuous. Hops enters the bullpen, by far the smallest animal in the group. Rhinos, buffalo, hippos, elephants, etc. Hops holds her paw out to a tough rhino. Hey, Officer Hops, ready to make the world a better place? <laughs> Nick Horton gives Hops a reluctant fist bump, nearly knocking her off the chair. In walks Chief Boca, a gruff cape up, takes the dais. Everyone snaps to attention and starts stomping the floor. All right, all right, everybody sit. As Hop sits, she disappears below the desk that is meant for a rhino. I've got three items on the docket. First, we need to acknowledge the elephant in the room. Hans to elephant. Francine, happy birthday. Elephant Francine blushes as the other cop clap. <clears throat> Number two, there's some new recruits with us I should introduce, but I'm not going to because I don't care. Finally, he turns to a pushpin pocket mark map that's covered in photos of missing mammals. Hops his eyes go wide. We have 14 missing mammal pieces, all predators from the giant. See little on and city hall is right up my tail to find them. This is priority assignment. Priority number one assignment. He gets hands Bogo a stack of case files. Bogo puts on his reading glasses, examining the files as he assigns cases. Officers Grisoldi, Fatmire, Delgado. Your teams take missing mammals from the rainforest district. Officers McPoint, Rhino Wits, Wolf. Your teams take Sahara Square. Officer Higgins. 
to start off got to be Patrick Town and finally our first one Morris Hawks. Hop sits up expected but steely. Vogel looks at the final case file in his hand, takes a dramatic breath, then Parking duty dismissed. Parking duty runs after Bogo. Uh Chief Chief Bogo. Bogo looks around, then down to find Hops. Sir, you said there were 14 missing nail cases. So? So I can handle one. You probably forgot, but I was top of my class at the academy. Didn't forget. Just don't care. Sir, I'm not just some token bunny. Well, then writing 100 tickets a day should be easy. He goes, slamming the door behind him. Judy stomps her foot. 100 tickets. I'm not gonna write 100 tickets. I'm gonna write 200 tickets. Then to the closed door. Before you. Interior, exterior, meter, made, carpet of tin. Hops dots a vest, buckles her seatbelt, floors the pedal, and takes off at two miles an hour, which leads to a parking meter montage. Hops zoomed past a row of cars, marking their tires, cruising the streets. Her super sensitive ears hear a meter in. She slams her brake, then proudly issues ticket number one. Ding! Another meter goes off, then another, and another. She's on a roll. She looks down at her counter. It's at 200. Boom! 200 tickets before noon. A final ding. Reveal. Her own traffic card is at an expired meter. Hops rolls her eyes and writes her cell phone ticket. 201. As Hops puts the ticket on her windshield, she hears a voice across the street. Hey, watch where you're going, fox. Hops looks across the street to see a red fox. Hops looks at him, a little suspicious. The fox looks around, then slinks into a cafe. Hops runs across the street and peeks in the window. It's an ice cream parlor, but the fox is gone. So don't. Where did he go? Interior Jumbo's Cafe moments later. Elephants scoop ice cream with their trunks, suck up nuts with their trunks. It's cute, but also disgusting. As Hobbs enters, he spots the, she spots the fox. Nick, uh, uh, Nick Wilde <laughs> at the front of the line and overhears the proprietor, Jerry, addressing him. Jerry Jumbo Jr. <laughs> what a name. Listen, I don't know what you're doing. Skulking around during the daylight hours, but I don't want any trouble in here, so we hit the road. Hobson snaps the holster on her pink fox repellent. I'm not looking for any trouble either. I just want to buy a jumbo pop for my little boy. Ready for action, slowly creeping forward. Hobson's expression changes when she sees that Nick is with his toddler son. To the boy, you want the red or the blue bell? Staring at the cute little boy, Hobbs is embarrassed by her impulse. She snaps the repellent holster and begins to leave, disgusted with herself. God, I'm such a... Oh, come on, kid. Back up. Listen, what? There aren't any fox ice cream joints in your part of town. Hobbs suddenly stops. Her ears go up and she turns around. Uh, no, no, there are, there are. It's just my boy. Dalsel's boy's hair, his goofy little stinker. He loves all things elf, wants to be one when he grows up. The boy gives a toot toot with his toy elephant drum. Isn't it adorable? Who the heck am I to crush his little dreams on, huh? right? Well, you probably can't read, Fox, but the sign says. Slowly reads sign belittling. We reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. So beat it. You're holding up the line. The little fox is about to cry when Hop walks up. Hello, excuse me. Hey, you're gonna have to wait until like everyone else meet a maid. Actually, if you don't badge, I'm an officer. Just had a quick question. Are your customers aware they're getting snot and mucus with their cookies and cream? <laughs> Amazing line. An elephant couple over here and spit out their ice cream. What are you talking about? Well, I don't want to cause you any trouble, 
illegally scooping ice cream with an uncle of trucks, a class three health code violation. A guilty employee releases a scoop from their trunk, which is kind of a big deal. Of course, I could let you off with a warning if you were to glove those trunks and, I don't know, finish selling this nice dad and his son a, what was it? A jumbo pop, please. A jumbo pop. Stews for a beat, the $15. Thank you so much. to my neck. That's the truth. Oh boy. I'm sorry, pal. Gotta be about the worst birthday ever. Please don't be mad at me. Kisses him to Hobbs. Thanks anyway. Turns to go. Hobbs slaps some money on the counter. Keep the change. Exterior Jumbo ca Jumbo's Cafe. Moments later, Hobbs heads the toddler's hand. Nick holds a huge Jumbo box. Officer, I can't thank you enough. So kind, really. Can I pay you back? Oh no, my treat. It's just, you know, it burns me up to see folks with such backwards attitude and foxes. I just want to say you're a great dad and just uh, a real articulate fellow. Ah, oh, well, that is high praise. It's rare that I find someone so non-patronizing. Officer... <laughs> Totally misses his dick. Hops. Mr. Wild. Nick Wild. To toddler. And you little guy, you want to be an elephant when you grow up? You will be an elephant because this is Zootopia. Anyone can be anything. Hops puts his sticker badge on his chest. Oh boy, I tell him that all the time. All right, here you go. Hands him popsicle. Two paws. Yeah. Oh, look at that smile. That's a happy birthday smile. All right, give her a little bye to two. <clears throat> the kid toots. Toot, toot. Bye now. Goodbye. Hobbs walks off with a spring in her snoop. Exterior Sahara Square Day. Hobbs continues to write tickets as she leaves a ticket on another car. She can see a few blocks away. It's Nick and his kid. Hobbs gives them a wave, but they don't notice her. Oh, hey, little two, two. Hobbs realizes they're melting their jumbo pop in the hot sun, channeling the juice into jugs. Huh? Nick and his kid pack the jugs into a van, and Nick's son gets in the driver's seat. They drive off, passing Hobbs, who stares, confused. Exterior Dunger Town a little later. Hobbs follows them to Dunger Town, where Nick's son uses his little paw prints to create molds they pour the popsicle juice into, creating dozens of smaller popsicles. Hobbs looks on scandalized. Exterior Savannah Central a little later. Hobbs watches them resell the popsicles at marked up prices to lemmings. When one buys one, they all do. Popsicles, catch your popsicles. Nick rakes in the cash. As the lemmings leave, they throw their used popsicle sticks into a recycling bin. A second later, Nick's son, Finnick, emerges from the bin with a bundle of used popsicle sticks. Hobbs is mortified. Exterior little Rodentia a little later. Hobbs watches Nick plop down a big bundle of used popsicle sticks in front of the mouse construction worker. For delivery. What's with the color? The color. Uh, it's Redwood. Hobbs has now graduated to genuine anger. Exterior, outside Little Rodentia. Moments later, Nick hands Finnick a lot of cash. Thirty-nine, forty. There you go. Way to work that diaper, big guy. Hey, no kiss bye-bye for daddy. Super Diva, uh, you will kiss me tomorrow. I'll bite your face off. Ciao. As Nick drives up, Finnick drives off in his van. With their loud French rap music, we discover Hops behind it, and she is not happy. Well, I stood up for you, and you lied to me, you liar. It's called a hustle, sweetheart, and I'm not the liar. 
years. Nick points behind Hobbs. She turns. No one. She turns back. Nick is gone, and his tail disappears around the corner. Hey. Nick walks on calmly. Hobbs hurries up to him. All right, Slick Nick, you're under arrest. Really? For what? Gee, I don't know. How about selling food without a permit, transporting undeclared commerce across borough lines, false advertising? Nick smiles and produces those documents. Permit, proceeded to player commerce, and I don't, I didn't false advertise it either. Take care. You told that mouse the popsicle sticks were red. That's right, red wood, with a space in the middle. Wood that is red. You can't touch me, carrots. I've been doing this since I was born. You're gonna want to refrain from calling me carrots. My bad, I just naturally assumed from some little carrot joke podunk no isn't it obvious uh no podunk is in deerbrook county and i grew up in Bunnyboro. okay tell me if this story sounds familiar harsh or no rapidly naive little nick with good grades and big ideas decides hey look at me i'm gonna move to zootopia where predators and prey live in harmony and sing kumbaya only to find whoopsie we don't all get along and that dream Becoming a big city cop. Double whoopsie. She's a meter maid. And whoopsie number three -sy. No one cares about her or her dreams. And soon enough, those dreams die and our bunny sinks into emotional and literal squalor living in a box under a bridge. Till finally she has no choice but to go back home with that cute fuzzy wuzzy little tail between her legs to become. You're from Bunny Burrow, is that what you said? So how about a carrot farmer? That sound about right. She's speechless. How did he get my number so quickly? A rhino almost crushes him. Be careful now. It won't just be your dreams getting crushed. Ever so slightly rattled. Hey, hey. No one tells me what I can or can't be. Especially not some jerk who never had the guts to try to be anything more than a popsicle hustler. Alright, look. Everyone comes to Zootopia thinking they can be anything they want. No, you can't. You can only be what you are. Points to himself. Sly Fox. Dumb bunny. I am not a dumb bunny. Right. And that's not wet cement. She looks down. She's landed in wet cement. As he goes, you'll never be a real cop. You're a cute meaner man, though. Maybe a supervisor one day. Hang in there. Interior house apartment hallway. Evening. Close under welcome mat. I hops wipes off his cement, her cement covered feet. Sorry, that sentence was really hard for some reason. Then she enters the apartment. Hops turns on the radio. Everybody hurts plays. She changes the station. A sadder song plays. She changes the station repeatedly. Each song progressively sadder. Finally, she lands on a treacly instrumental that will score the scene. She puts in a microwave dinner. Carrots for one. Hobbs takes her food, a single carrot, and sits at a small table. Her phone rings. Insert mom and dad FaceTime. Hobbs shakes her head, sighs, then puts on a fake smile and answers. Oh, hey, it's my parents. Aw, oh, there she is. Hi, sweetheart. The FaceTime cuts between Bonnie on her phone. Stu will pop in and out of frame. Hey there, Jude the Dude. How was your first day on the force? It was real great. Yeah, everything you ever hoped. Absolutely, and more. Everyone's so nice, and I feel like I'm really making a difference. One too many diet sodas. Sorry. Pops headed to frame. Hey, wait a second. Holy cripes, Bonnie, look at that. A discovery. Oh my sweet heaven. Judy, are you a meter maid? Hobbs is still wearing her vest, and her hat is on the chair. Panicked. Oh, oh, this, no, oh, no, no, this is just a temporary thing. It's the safest job on the force. Ah, uh, she's not a real cop. Our prayers have been answered. Glorious day. Meter maid, meter maid. Dad, dad, meter maid, meter maid. I can't go any higher whispering, I'm sorry, guys. Dad. You know what? It's been a really long day. I should really... That's right, you get some rest. Those meters aren't going to mate themselves. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 
she hangs up defeated. The self-pitying music comes up full. Hey, bun, turn down that depressing music. Leave the meter maid alone. Didn't you hear her conversation? She feels like a failure. Judy turns off the music. Oh, shut up. Yo, shut up. Yo, shut up. Quietly to herself. Tomorrow's another day. Yeah, but it might be worse. Off Judy's exhausted look, we cut to exterior streets of Zootopia the next day. Hops on meter maid duty, thunks a ticket on a windshield. I was 30 seconds over. Another meter dings. Hops puts another ticket on a very small windshield. Uh, you're a real hero, lady. Ding, another ticket down. A mother hippo picks up the ticket. Her small child looks right at Hops. <laughs> My mommy says she wishes you were dead. Uncle Rabbit, my tax dollars pay your salary. Interior meter maid cart. After what has clearly been a series of these encounters, Hops repeatedly bangs her head on the windshield. For effect, I am a real cop. I am a real cop. I am a real cop. <laughs> hey! Suddenly a big, big bangs on the cart's window. Hop starts. You, bunny! Wrote. Sir, if you have a grievance, you may contest your citation in traffic court. What are you talking about? My shop! It was just robbed! Look, he's getting away! Well, are you a cop or not? Hopsy's a weasel running with a bag of stolen goods, snapping out of it. Oh, yes, yes. Don't worry, sir. I got this. Hops jumps out and gives chase, teaching her silly best. Stop. Stop in the name of the law. Catch me if you can. Cut the tail. The chase is on. The horn screeches up in his cop car. Well, we're coming through. This officer of the court, we got a 1030. It's 10.30. It's 10.31. We got a 10.31. Hops slides across his foot. Got dibs. Officer Hops, I am in pursuit. Hops chases the weasel who races through Savannah Central. As Hops advances, the weasel ducks into a little rodentia. Thanks to her small size, Hops follows him in. You freeze. Arriving too big to enter. Hey! Meter maid, wait for the real cops. Exterior Little Rodentia continues. Hops emerges in Little Rodentia, teeming with tiny rodents. Stop. Hops spots the weasel, who's using two mouse cars as skates. She chases after him, smashing through Little Rodentia. As the, as the weasel jumps off the top of the mouse building, he knocks it over, but Hops is able to save them from crashing. Resuming the chase, Hops jumps off the building, landing precariously in the midst of a large group of mice. Oh, oh, sorry, coming through. Excuse me, excuse me, pardon. Hops locates Weaselton, who's safely making his escape on the top of a tiny mouse train. Bon voyage, Flatfoot. But Hops won't quit. She takes a shortcut and knocks him off the train. Then scream amidst the chaos. Hey, stop right there. Weasel throws an ornamental donut at Hops. Have a donut, Kappa. He's so silly. But the donut misses and rolls towards some shrews coming out of the mousies. Oh my god, did you see those leopard print jiggings? Sees the donut about to kill her. But at the last second, Hobbs stops it. Deep breath. <sighs> I love your hair. Aw, thank you. Meanwhile, the weasel spots the bag he was stealing and smugly picks it up, ready to leave. Pop, dump, pop. Then, out of nowhere, Hobbs dumps the donut on his head. <laughs> the lobby is overflowed with animals filing missing animal reports. Glowhauser is dealing with an otter. Mrs. Otterton. Okay, you're just gonna have to be a patient. We want just like everyone else, Mrs. Otterton, okay? Then, bam, the weasel in Donut rolls through the front door and hits Cloud.
Bowser's desk, it settles, revealing Hops. I popped the weasel. Behind her, Chief Moko yells from the second floor, Hops! Interior CPD, Moko's office a little later. Hops sits in a big chair in front of Moko, like a kid in a principal's office. Moko looks over a report, abandoning your most insightless scurry, reckless endangering of rodents. But to be fair, you did stop a master criminal from stealing two dozen moldy onions. Hate to disagree with you, sir, but those aren't onions. They're actually a crocus varietal named Minicamp Homolysithus. Polycythius. They're classy botanical, sir. I grew up in a family where plain awesome tree was kind of a thing. Shut your tiny mouth now. Sir, I cut the bad guy. That's my job. Your job is putting tickets on parked cars. Chief, uh, Miss Addison's here to see you again. Not now. Okay, I just didn't know if you wanted to take it this time. She seems really upset. Not now. Sir, I don't want to be a meter maid. I want to be a real cop. Do you think the mayor asked me what I wanted when he assigned you to me? But sir, if you... Life isn't some cartoon musical where you can sing a little song and your insipid dreams magically come true. So let it go. Mrs. Otterton marches in with a claw hazard trailing. Five minutes of your time, please. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. I tried to stop her. She is super slippery. I gotta go sit down. <laughs> Ma'am, as I've told you, we are doing everything we can. My husband has been missing for ten days. His name is Emmett Otterton. Yes, I know. He's a florist. We have two beautiful children. He would never just disappear. Mrs. Otterton reveals her own sweet photo of Emmett with her and her family. Ma'am, our detectives are very busy. Please, there's gotta be someone to find my M. Mrs. Otterton, I will find him. Mrs. Otterton races over to Hobbs and gives her a big hug of relief. Mogo looks to Hobbs, ready to explode. Oh, thank you. Bless you. Bless you, little bunny. Man's picture of family. Take this. Find my Emmett. Bring him home to me and my babies, please. Mogo grunts and ushers, ushers Mrs. Otterton back outside. Mrs. Otterton, please wait out here. Of course. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you all so much. One second. He closes the door and turns to Hobbs, furious. You're fired. What? Why? In subordination. Now, I'm going this door, and you're going to tell that under you're a former meter maid with delusions of grandeur who will not be taking the case. Mogo opens the door to find Bellwether hugging Mrs. Otterton. I just heard Officer Hobbs is taking the case. Assistant Mayor Bellwether. Texting the Mammal and the Inclusion Initiative is really starting to pay off. Mayor Lionhurst is going to be so jazzed. No, no, don't tell the mayor just yet. And I sent it, and it is done, so I did need that. All right, well, I'd say the case is in good hands. Us little guys really need to stick together, right? Like glue. These lines are good. Good one. Just call me if you ever need anything, okay? You've always got a friend in the city, Judy. All right, bye-bye. Thank you, ma'am. Bogo forces a smile and closes the door, even more pissed. I will give you 48 hours. Yes. That's two days to find him in order. Okay. But you strike out. You resign. Hobbs is taken back by it for a moment. Then nods. Oh, uh, okay. Deal. Suspected. Those are good people. Make case fun. Interior CPD desk area a little later. Glass <laughs> Clyhauser places the Otterton file on his desk for Hobbs. Here you go, one missing otter. Hobbs opens the file. It's a single piece of paper. What? That's it? Yikes, that is the smallest case file I've ever seen. Leads, none, when 
is this done? And you're not in the computer system yet, so resources done. <laughs> I hope you didn't stake your career on cracking this one. Gladhauser takes a bite of his donut and a crumbs land on a picture in the file, drawing Hobbs' attention to it. Okay. <sighs> Last known sighting. Hobbs brushes away the crumbs, revealing a picture of Mr. Otterton on the street. Gladhauser annoyingly slurps from a soda bottle. Hobbs squints at the picture, intrigued. One moment. Can I just borrow a crowding soda bottle? Thank you. Hobbs uses Gladhauser bottle to enlarge the picture. She sees Mr. Otterton holding a popsicle. Popsicle. A murder weapon. Get your popsicle. Yeah, cause that... What does that mean? It means I of a lead. <laughs> Dissolve to exterior downtown street later. We find Nick pushing a baby stroller. Hop zooms up in her traffic cart smile. Hi, hello, it's me again. Hey, Officer Tintu. Fake laugh. Actually, it's Officer Hobbs, and I'm here to ask you some questions about a case. What happened to Meter Maid? Did someone steal a traffic cone? It wasn't me. Hobbs looks ahead. Nick has gone around the corner. Hobbs pulls in front of Nick and sounds her siren. Hey, Carrots, you're gonna wake the baby. I gotta get to work. This is important, sir. I think your ten dollars worth of popicles could wait. I make two hundred bucks a day, fluff, three hundred sixty-five days a year since I was twelve. And time is money. Hop along. Please, just look at the picture. Hobbs holds up the traffic cam picture of the other. You sold Mr. Otterton that popsicle, right? Do you know him? I know everybody, and I also know that somewhere there's a toy store missing its stuffed animal, so why don't you get back to your box? Hobbs' ears droop. Fine, we'll have to do this the hard way. She puts a boot on the stroller. Did you just my stroller. Whoa, weird noise. I'm so sorry. Did you just boot my stroller? Uh, Nicholas Wilde, you are under arrest. For what? Holding your feelings. Felony tax evasion. It's the same thing that got Al Capone. Pretty rough. The IRS stops for no one. Remember that. Nick's smile drops a bit. Yeah, two hundred dollars a day, three hundred sixty-five days a year since you were twelve. That's two decades, so times twenty. Calculating, which is one million four hundred sixty thousand. I think. I mean, I have just a dumb money, but we are good at multiplying. Anyway, according to your tax forms, presenting the forms, you reported. Let me see here. Zero. Unfortunately, lying on a federal form is a punishable offense. Five years jail time. Well, it's my word against yours. Hobbs clicks a button on her carrot pen, which speaks. 200 bucks a day, fluff, 365 days a year, since I was 12. Actually, it's your word against yours. If you want this pen, you're going to help me find this poor, missing otter, or the only place you'll be selling popsicles is the prison cafeteria. Dramatic smirk. It's called a hustle, sweetheart. Nick is utterly speechless. Uh, she hustled you. Rude laugh. She hustled you good. You're a cop now, Nick. You're gonna need one of these. Have fun working with the buzz. Whack. Finnick slaps his junior officer sticker on Nick. Start talking. I don't know where he is. I only saw where he went. Great. Let's go. It's not exactly a place for a cute little bunny. Don't call me cute. Get in the car. Okay, you're the boss. <laughs> Interior, the Mystic Spring Oasis. Later, the Mystic Spring Oasis is a new AG full of incense, etc. A meditating hippie yak sits on flies buzzing around his head, matching the tone of his own. Hobbs enters with Nick and approach the yak, still with his eyes closed. I, I don't... Oh! 
Mike's not picking this one. Alright, you guys get it. Hi, hello. The act continues his incessant chanting. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Yak finally breaks out of his trance and notices Hops. Hello, my name is... You know, I'm gonna hit the pause button right there. We're all good on Bunny Scout cookies. He's Canadian. Uh, no, I'm Officer Hobbs, CPD. I'm looking for a missing mammal, Emmett Otterton, right here. I may have frequented this establishment. The yak looks at Hobbs' picture. His eyes go wide as if he's about to say something really important. And then... A joke. Flies go everywhere. Yeah, old Emmett. Haven't seen him in a couple of weeks. But hey, you should really talk to his yoga instructor. I'd be happy to take you back. Oh, thank you so much. I'd appreciate all that more than you can imagine. It would be such a big... Scream. You are naked. The act comes around the corner and he is naked. Oh, oh for sure. We're a naturalist club. Yeah, in Zootopia, anyone can be anything. And these guys, they be naked. Nick grins. Hobbs isn't pleased. Donkey is just on the other side of the pleasure pool. The yak opens the door to a pool area. Tons of naked animals sunning themselves, laying in the pool, etc. Hobbs' eyes nearly pop out of her head. Nick leans in. Does this make you uncomfortable? Because if so, there's no shame in calling it quits. <laughs> yes, there it is. Yeah, that's the spirit. Exterior Naturalist Club Courtyard moments later. Nick revels in Hobbs' discomfort over the nude animals everywhere. Lots of nude animals. Yax leads them oblivious. Yeah, some mammals say the naturalist life is weird, but you know what I say is weird? Clothes on animals. Here we go. Not easy. Engaging in a string of fairly evocative yoga poses. As you can see, Nagi's an elephant, so she'll totally remember everything. Hey, Nagi, those dudes have some questions about Emmett the Otter. Who? Uh, Emmett Otterton. He's been coming to our yoga class for like six years. I have no memory of this beef art. He's an otter, actually. He's an otter, actually. He was here a couple Wednesdays ago, remember? Oh. Yeah, he was wearing a green cable knit sweater vest and a new pair of corduroy slacks. Oh, and a paisley tie. Sweet wins or not, real tight. Remember that, Nagi? No. Nagi doesn't want to be bothered, and she's useless. Yax is a gold mine, though. Hobbs writes down everything he says. Yeah, and we fucked him out, and he got in a big old white car with a silver trim. He didn't do it up. The third cylinder wasn't firing. Remember that, Nagi? No. You didn't happen to kiss the license plate number, did you? Oh, for sure. It was 2090HD03. 03. Wow, this is a lot of great info. Thank you. Told you not, he has a mind like a steel trap. I wish I had a memory like an elephant. <clears throat> Exterior Sahara Square, moments later. Nick and Hobbs emerge. Well, I had a ball. You are welcome for the loop, and seeing as how any moron can run a blade, I will take that pen and bid you adieu. As Nick reaches to take it, Hobbs realizes something and leaves him hanging. Blade? I can't run a blade. I'm not in the system yet. Give me the pen, please. Hobbs gets an idea. Still withholding pen. What was it you said? Any moron can run a blade. Gosh, if only there were more moron around here who were up to the task. Rabbit, I did what you asked. You can't keep me on the hook forever. Not forever. Why, I only have 36 hours left to solve this case. So can you run the blade or not? Actually, 
I just remembered I have a pal in the DMV. Iconic scene. I'm not your guess. If you've never seen this movie, you're going to love it. I think, I think I'm looking over there because I'm used to streaming now. And I always have the camera over there. But the camera's here for this one. Next year, DMV later, they arrive at the DMV Department of Mammal Vehicles. Flash is the fastest guy in there. You need something done, he's on it. I hope so. We are really fighting the clock. Every minute counts. Suddenly stops, alarmed. Wait, they're all sloths. Unfortunately, every mammal working there is sloth. Insert sloth employee is taking extraordinary of time to do the simplest of tasks, stapling, stamping, etc. You said this was going to be quick. Faux innocence. What? Are you saying that because he's a sloth he can't be fast? I thought in Zootopia anyone could be anything. Nick smiles. Hops does it. They head to Flash's station. Flash, Flash, 100 yard dash. Buddy, it's nice to see you. Flash doesn't respond. Beep. Nice to see you. Two. Hops looks like she's going to die. Hey, Flash, I love you to meet my friend. Darling, I forgot your name. Big smile to Nick. Officer Judy Hobbs, CBD, shows badge. How are you? Flash doesn't respond. Then, I am doing. I am. Just fine as well as I can be. What? To an impatient hops. Hang in there. Can I do? Well, I was hoping you could go to play for you. Well, I was hoping you could today. Hops pauses cautiously, optimistic that he's finished. I was hoping you could run a plate for us. We are in a really big hurry. Sure. What's the plate? 29T number. Hop sticks a breath. 29THD03. THD03. THD03. HD03. D03. Zero. Three. Flash is just about to say three, but. Hey, Flash, want to hear a joke? No. Sure. What do you call a three ump camp? I don't know what do you call a uh, camel. Three humped camel. I don't think pregnant. I definitely caught it that time. I want to make sure we got that punchline. That will do good. Because it's the best punchline in the entire movie. Nick laughs at his own joke. Flash doesn't react, then finally raises his head with a smile that Ha! 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 Yes, very funny, very funny. Can we please just focus on the task? Flash slowly reaches over to the sloth next to him. Hey, Priscilla. Oh no. Yes. Oh. Yes, Flash. What do no you call a a three ump camel pregnant? Okay, great, we got it. Please just three ump. Ah, 
Interior DMV later. A slow dot matrix printer spits out new drive P drifts for car license plate number 29DHD03. Here. Yeah, yeah, thank you. You go. Hops frantically reads 29DHD03 is registered to Tundratown Limo Service. Limo to Otterton. And the limo's in Tundratown. It's in Tundratown. Way to hustle, bud. I love you. I owe you. Hurry, we gotta beat the rush hour end. Exterior DMV continues. They go outside. It's night. It's night. And exterior snowy lot moments later. Okay, I've never noticed this joke before. You see, this is why you have to read the script. For every movie that you watch, for every movie that you watch, you have to read the script. It's imperative. Um, because you're gonna miss little things like this. For instance, Nick and Hobbs reach legitimate enterprise car service. <laughs> Hobbs tries to open the lock. Closed. Great. And I will bet you don't have a warrant to get in. Darn it. It's a bummer. There's a big gated parking lot which is chained shut, but they can see a few limos parked inside, covered in snow. You wasted the day on purpose. Madam. I have a fake badge. I would never impede your pretend investigation. It's not a pretend investigation. Look, see, show a picture of Otterton. See him. This Otter is missing. Well, then they should have gotten a real cop to find him. What is your problem? Does seeing me fail somehow make you feel better about your own sad, miserable life? Nick considers this for a moment. It does, 100%. Then, now, since you are sans warrant, I'm guessing we're done. Hobbs considers this and sighs, defeated. Fine, we are done. Here's your pen. Hobbs then casually throws it over the fence behind him. Hey! Staring at Ben. First off, you throw like a bunny. Second, you're a very sore loser. Starts to climb. See you later, Officer Fluff. So sad this is over. I wish I could have helped more. Nix jumps down on the other side, but just as he reaches for the pen, Hobbs is suddenly right there and snatches it. The thing is, you don't need a warrant if you have probable cause, and I'm pretty sure I saw a shifty low wife climbing the fence, so you're helping plenty. Come on. Hobbs cheerfully heads off. Nick watches her, not quite smiling, but he's starting to respect his opponent. Exterior parking lot moments later. Hops wipes snow off a back bumper. License plate 29THD03. 29THD03. This is it. Interior refrigerator moments later. They open a big door, which looks like it belongs to a refrigerator. As they snoop around, Hops uses tweezers to pick up a fur. Polar bear fur. Put in glove box. Oh my god. What? What? Hobbs looks up, only to see Nick holding some Jerry Vol CDs. The velvety pipes are Jerry Vol. Put on CD. Who still uses CD? As Hobbs rolls her eyes and goes back to collecting clues, Nick lowers the part back partition and his eyes go wide. Carrots, if your otter was here, he had a very bad day. Hobbs' flashlight reveals claw marks covering the back seat. Those are claw marks. You ever see anything like this? No. Through the fog on the floor, Hobbs spots a wallet. Oh, wait, look. They slink back into the back seat. Hobbs opens up the wallet to find a driver's license for Mr. Otterton. This is him, Emmett Otterton. He was definitely here. What do you think happened? Nick spots a cocktail glass. It's etched with a B. Well, now wait a minute. That's suspicious. What bear fur? Rat pack music. Fancy cup. Suddenly terrified. I know whose car this is. We gotta go. Why? Whose car is it? Whose car is it? Nick tries to put everything back the way he found it. The most feared crime boss in Tundratown. They call him Mr. Big, and he does not like me, so we gotta go. I'm not leaving. This is a crime scene. Well, it's going to be an even bigger crime scene if Mr. Big finds me here, so we're leaving right now. Nick ushers hops to the door, but opens it to find two big polar bears. Full excitement. Raymond. It is that Kevin. Long time no see. And speaking of no see, how about you forget you saw me, huh? For all time's sake. The polar bear grabs Nick and Hop by their throat. That's a no. Yank them off screen. 
script. It's a long script, guys. I think we're about halfway through. I believe the script is 100, this is 104 pages, and I think that was just 53. So. Interior polar bear car moments later. Vroom. A car whizzes by. Inside, Nick and Hobbs sit nervously in the back seat, sandwiched between the polar bears. One of them casually scrolls through Zugel, Zugel photos on his phone. What did you do to make Mr. Big so mad at you? So dumb. I, uh, may have sold him a very expensive old rug that was made from the fur of a skunk's. Sweet cheese and crackers. Love to reveal the car passing through a security gate of a residential compound. A polar bear guard lets them in. Interior Mr. Big's residence moments later. Nick and, uh, Nick and Hobbs are shoved into the room that's right out of the godfather of polar bear enters. Is that Mr. Big? No. Now an even bigger polar bear enters. What about him? Is that him? No. And then another, the biggest polar bear yet. That's gotta be him. Stop talking, stop talking, stop talking. The huge polar bear growls at Nick, then reveals a tiny chair, upon which sits a teeny tiny arctic shrew. This is Mr. Big. He sounds like Marlon Brando sped up to 78 RPM. Very specific. Mr. Big, this is a simple misunderstanding. Mr. Big holds out a tiny finger for Nick to kiss his ring. Nick painstakingly does so. This is a simple misunderstanding. Mr. Big motions for Nick to shut up. Alright, guys. Started this accent. You come to me. You come here unannounced. On the day my daughter is to be married. Well, actually, we were brought here against our will, so... Mr. Big is not impressed. Point is, I did not know it was your car, and I certainly did not know about your daughter's wedding. I trusted you, Nikki. I welcomed you into my home. We walked right together. Grandma Bob made you a cannoli. And how did you repay my generosity? With a rug made from the mud of a skunk. A skunk mud rug. Disrespected me. You disrespected my grandmama, who I buried in that skunk butt rug. I told you never to show your face here again. But here you are, snooping around with this. What are you, a former? It's with the costume. Sir, I am a. C she is a mind. This mind cannot speak. You can't speak if you're a mind. That was weird. No, I'm a cop, and I'm on the Emmett Otterton case, and my evidence put the M in your car, so intimidate me all you want. I'm going to find out just what you did to that otter if it's the last thing I do. Mr. Big considers this, makes a little grunt. Then I have only one request. Say hello to Grandma. Lisa. Lisa. I've been waiting an hour for that bit. That is all. Polar bears snatch Nick and Hobbs. Whoa, I didn't say nothing. I'm not saying nothing. And you never will. The polar bears open a hidden door on the floor, revealing an icy hole beneath. Please, no, no. If you're mad at me about the rug, I've got more rugs. Nick and Hobbs are about to be dumped in when... Oh, Daddy, it's time for a dance. Sees them trying to kill Nick. What did we say? No mice anyone at my wedding. I have to, baby. Daddy has to. Ice him. Nick and Hobbs screaming. Wait, wait. She's the money that saved my life yesterday. From that giant donut. There's money. Yeah, I... Hi. 
love your dress. Thank you. This big emotions for the polar bears to put the hops down. Put them down. Both the other need the raised harvest. Hope you find the autumn. I will take your kindness. Pay it forward. Hop, hops missed your big kiss on the cheeks. Nick stares at them. What is happening? Interior wedding reception a little later. A lavish celebration full of arched candles is dancing. We find Nick and Hobbs at the head table next to Mr. Big. They all eat tiny pieces of wedding cake. Otta did his florist. He's like a part of the fame. He had something he wanted to discuss. That's why I sent that car to pick him up. But he never arrived. Because he was attacked. Oh, he attacked Otterton. Otterton, he went crazy, ripped up the car, scared my driver half to death, and disappeared into the night. He's a sweet little otter, my child. That's turning into Trump again. My child, maybe we evolved, but deep down, we're all stuck animals. What is, what is going on? What is going on with this accident? I can't do it. <clears throat> Nick and Hobbs trade a worried glance over the following when he crossed us all to Nick and Hobbs walking in the rainy forest. You want to find out it didn't talk to the driver of the car. His name's Manchas. He lives in the rainforest district. Only he can tell you more. Exterior Rainforest District later that night. Nick and Hobbs make their way across a mossy rope bridge high above the forest floor. It leads to a moss covered apartment. Exterior the canopy moments later. At the door of the driver's apartment, they ring a bell. Mr. Manches, Judy Hobbs, CBD, we want to know what happened to Emmett Otterton. Pete. The door creaks open. You should be asking what happened to me. Thinking. I don't know what I'm thinking. I don't know what I'm thinking. The door opens to the chain, revealing a Munchus is a huge jaguar, but he's badly beaten up. He has a black eye and he scratches. Nick and Hobbs are taken aback. What a teensy otter did that. The habit of Munchus luck we cut to a flashback. Manchus is driving when he's attacked from the back seat. He was an animal, down on all fours. He was a savage. The car spins out. Emmett growls at Manchus, then runs off. Back to the canopy. Run, haunted. There was no warning. He just kept yelling about the night howlers over and over the night howlers. Nick and Hobbs share a subtle look. They have no idea what night howlers are. So, you know about the night owlers too. Good, good, good. Because the night owlers are exactly what we talk about, right? Yep. So, uh, you just open the door and tell us what you know and we'll tell you what we know, okay? Okay. Ron just closes the door and starts to unlock a series of nipples. Judy gives, gives Nick an impressed look. Clever fox. There's a commotion inside, followed by a scream. Uh, Mr. Manches. The door creaks open just an inch. Nick and Hobbs seem startled. Look slight. Look slight to the left. Hobbs slowly pushes the door open, revealing Manches in the center of the room, hunched over and grunting. Buddy, are you okay? Hobbs looks at Manches. Munches turns right at him. His eyes are dilated. He turns savage. He's poised to pounce on Nick and Hobbs. Run, run. The jaguar tears after them. He's deranged, primal. Nick and Hobbs run, and the jaguar is closing in. What is wrong with him? I don't know. Nick and Hobbs run across the bridge. Munches closes in. Jump. They jump off the bridge to a lower branch. They duck into a hollow log, and Manchus follows them. 
to Nick head down. Hobbs frantically picks up a police radio. Officer Hobbs to dispatch. Interior police dis police station dispatch. Same. We find Klauser showing a handcuffed perp a video on his phone of pop star gazelle singing and dancing. A red light rings on blinks on the desk phone, but Klauser ignores it. Are you familiar with Gazelle, greatest singer of our lifetime, Angel with Horns? Okay, hold on, keep watching. Who is that beside her? Who is it? Reveal, Klauser is dancing on the stage with Gazelle. Wow, you're one hot dancer. Benjamin Klauser. <laughs> it's me. Did you think it was real? It looks so real. It's not. It's just a new app. Hold on a second. Kla <laughs> Klauser. The speaker button. Klauser! Rev. What do you, you. I don't know what the. I don't know what this. I don't know what this is here for. I don't know what this. You can tell me in the comments. Exterior of the canopy is saying. Rah! Marches takes a swipe at Nick. Klauser, listen to me. We have a 1091 Jaguar gone savage. Find it to, to Junja. It's to Unka. As they emerge from the log, Hops slips, dropping a radio. Okay, we're sending back up. Hops. Hops. Naked Hops run, sliding around a corner. Ahead is a gondola station. There, head to the sky trams. They run to the gondolas. Hops darts out of Machis' way, but slips and is headed off the platform when she manages to grab on. Dangling from the edge, Nick searches for her. Get in, carrots, carrots. He tries to hold on to the gondola for Hops, who is struggling to pull herself back on the platform. Go! As the, not, as the gondola pulls away, Nick tries to stop to no avail. No, no, no. Nick backs up. The jaguar stalks him. Buddy, one predator to another. The jaguar charges. Before it gets Nick, blank. It's yanked back in place. We see a handcuff on his back paw, attached to a metal post. Hops cuffed him. Now, I can see you're a little tense, so I'm just gonna give you a little personal space. The jaguar thrashes, knocking Nick and Hops over the edge. Hops barely grabs a vine, but struggles to hold Nick in the other hand. As much as growls at them from above, Nick looks at the abyss below. Hops looks around, her mind racing. Rabbit, whatever you do, do not let go. I'm gonna let go. No, you, what? No, I said listen. No. I'm having a really good time, guys. I don't know what to tell you. I'm just having a good time with it. I love this movie. <laughs> Hops lets go, swinging them over the netting of vines, kind of on top of each other. They can't believe they're alive. They look at each other, stunned, relieved. Garrett's, you saved my life. Well, that's what we do with the ZP. D. 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 Naked hops plummet. They are about to hit the ground, but a vine attached to their legs stops them right before impact. Whoa! A convoy of police arrives, screeching in front of them. Out steps Bogo. Hops smiles. The cavalry has arrived. Well, this should be good. Hops leads the cops up to the canopy full of continents. I thought this was just a missing mammal case, but they're way bigger. Mr. Otterton didn't just disappear. I believe he and his jaguar, they... Went savage, sir. Savage. This isn't the Stone Age, Hops. Animals don't go savage. I thought so too, till I saw this. Hops pulls back some leaves to reveal. The jaguar is gone. There's no sign of him or his handcuffs. It's like it never happened. Hops' eyes go wide. What? He was right here. A savage jaguar. Sir, I know what I saw. He almost killed us. 
Or maybe an aggressive predator looks savage to you rabbits. Calls out to cubs. Let's go. Wait, sir, I'm not the only one who saw him. To Nick. Nick. Upstairs to Nick, before he can explain. You think I'm going to believe a fox? Well, he has a key witness and I enlisted. The last job for two days to find the other. You wait. That was the deal. Badge. Bogo extends his arm, waiting for Hobbs to hand it over. But, sir, we... Badge. Hobbs looks at Bogo, then looks at her badge. She's about to reach for it when... Uh, no. Bogo stops and glares at Nick. What did you say, Fox? Sorry, he said. No, she will not be giving you that badge. Look, you gave her a clown vest and a three-wheel joke mobile, and two days to solve a case you guys haven't cracked in two weeks. Yeah, no wonder she needed to get help from a fox. None of you guys were going to help her, were you? Hobbs looks at Nick, stunned he's sticking up for her. Here's the thing, Chief. You gave her the 48 hours, so technically we still have 10 left to find our Mr. Otterton. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So if you'll excuse us, we have a very big lead to follow and a case to track. Good day. Nick guides Hobbs to a passing gondola, pushing her in. Officer Hobbs. The gondola pulls away, leaving Bogo and the rest of the police left flabbergasted. Very short break. Interior, exterior, gondola, continuous. Hobbs and Nick both stare straight ahead. Thank you. Never let them see that they get to you. Hobbs looks at Nick, a little surprised. Nick looks out. So, things do get to you. No. I mean, not anymore. I was small, emotionally unbalanced like you once. Har, har. Retreating into the memory. No, it's true. I think I was eight, more, maybe nine. All I wanted to do was join the Junior Ranger Scouts. Just all two. Interior, young Nick's bedroom. Dusk, flashback. Young Nick, tiny and cherubic, looks into the mirror. We see mother's mom's tying a scout kerchief around his neck. So my mom scraped together enough money to buy me a brand new uniform because I got I was gonna fit in. Exterior scout building night to flashback. Young Nick bounds down the sidewalk and heads up the stairs. Even if I was the only predator in the troop. Interior scout building scout meeting moments later, flashback. Young Nick enters a church basement. Spots a group of prey kids, all in scout uniforms. They wave him over. The only fox. Okay, Nick. I was going to be part of a pack. Ready for the initiation? Yeah, pretty much born ready. They high-five Nick. It looks promising and fun. I was so proud. Suddenly, a big kid turns off the lights. Other kids switch on flashlights. Shining them on Nick like Gestapo spotlights. Okay, now raise your right hand and deliver the oath. I, Nicholas Wilde, promise to be brave, loyal, helpful, and trustworthy. Even though you're a fox. What? Then a bunch of kid animals tackle Nick. Soon all of the animals pile on, kicking and shoving him. No, what did I do wrong, you guys? No, please tell me, what did I do wrong? With Nick pinned, the primary mean kid straddles him. Someone hands him a muzzle. The mean kid snaps it on Nick's snout. What did I do? If you thought we would ever trust a fox without a muzzle, you're even dumber than you look. Nick breaks free from the kids, scrambles away from them in fright. As they laugh, he races out the door. Aw, oh, is he gonna cry? Once out of sight, Nick panics as he strokes Troop with the muzzle. It won't go off. Finally, painfully, he pulls it off and throws it on the ground. He collapses, weeping. The gondola. I learned two things that day. One, I was never going to let anyone see that they got to me. Hobbs looks at Nick, who avoids eye contact. And two, if the woman 
It's only going to see a fox as shifty and untrustworthy. There's no point in trying to be anything else. Nick, you're so much more than that. Ops touches Nick's arm as the gondola pierces the clouds. The city at dawn comes into view. It's gotten too real for Nick. He abruptly changes the subject. Oh, look at that traffic down there. What do you call it? Radio voice. How about go to, out to Chuck in Traffic Central? Chuck, how are things looking on the jam cams? Nick, I'm glad you told me. The jam cams? Seriously, it's okay. No, no sh 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 There are traffic cameras everywhere, all over the canopy. Whatever happened to that Jaguar? The traffic cams would have caught it. Bingo. Hop. Hops gives him a chuck on the arm and pressed. Pretty sneaky slick. However, if you didn't have access to the system before, I doubt Chief Boca Buffalo Mud is going to let you into it now. B, then. No, I have a friend at City Hall that might help. Interior City Hall later that morning. We find Bellwether trying to balance a stack of binders while struggling to keep pace with Mayor Lionheart, who's walking quickly in front of him. Sir, if we could just review it, he's very important. Almost drops binders. Sir, she almost steps on a little mouse lady. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sir. Okay, I heard you, Bellwether. Just take care of it. Set another binder atop her stack. Please, and clear my afternoon. I'm going out. No, no, sir. You do have a meeting with herds and grazing, sir. If I could just... He continues through a door. Bellwether tries to follow, but the door shuts on her, spilling the binders to the floor. Oh, mutton chops. As Bellwether picks up her mask, Nick's on. Hops and Nick appear. Assistant Mayor Bellwether, we need your help. Interior Bellwether's office later. We're in Bellwether's grand little office. Nick and Hops hover over her while she sits at her computer. We just need to get into the traffic camp database. Nick subtly touches Bellwether's wool puff. Mouths to Hops. So floppy. She would never let me this close. You can't just touch a sheep's wool. It's like cotton candy. Stop it. Judy swats Nick but accidentally hits Bellwether's puff. Where to? Rainforest District. Fine in Tahunga. Ankle on the computer screen. There, the traffic cams are in the city. This is so exciting, actually. Well, you know, I never get to do anything this way. You're the assistant mayor of Zootopia. Oh, I'm more of a glorified secretary. I think Mayor Lyerhart just wanted the sheep vote. Then it cheerily. But he did give me that nice mug. She motions to, <laughs> to a mug that reads World's Greatest Dad Assistant Mayor. Feels good to be appreciated. Smell weather. Bellwether cringes. That's a fun little name he likes to use. I called him Lion Fart once. He did not like that, let me tell you. It was not a good day for me. Yes, sir. I thought you were going to cancel my afternoon. Oh, dear. I better go. The hops will leave. Let me know what you find. It was really nice for me to be. While we're young, smell weather. Bellwether finally opens her big heavy door and leaves. <laughs> you think she counts? She. <laughs> oh. You think when she goes to sleep, she counts herself? Shush. Okay, traffic cams. Looking at computer. Tonka, Tonka. We're in. Nick and Hobbs watch the footage from the night before. We can see the Jaguar going nuts. Then a black van skids up and some wolves hop out. Who are these guys? Timber wolves. Look at these dum dums. The wolves suddenly capture the jaguar the net. Judy gasps, shocked. Nick is unfazed. Bet you a nickel one of them's gonna howl. The wolves howl. And there it is. What is it? The wolves and the howl. It's like the light bulb moment. Howlers. Night howlers. That's what Machis was afraid of. Wolves. Wolves are the night howlers. If they took Monchus, I bet they took Otterton, too. All we gotta do is find out where they went. She clicks the monitor, but as the wolves drive off, they disappear through a tunnel and don't come out the other side. Wait, where'd they go? 
know if I wanted to avoid surveillance because I was doing something illegal, which I never have, I would use the maintenance level 6B, which would put them out. Clicks on another camera. Nothing. Then the wolves emerge in the van. Right there. Ops looks at Nick, impressed. Well, lucky you, junior detective. You know, I think you'd make a, you'd actually make a pretty good cop. How dare you? Ops goes back to clicking. We track the wolves through alleys and back roads. Acacia Alley, Ficus Underpass, South Canyon. They're heading out of town. Where does that road go? Exterior cliffside asylum, golden hour. The imposing cliffside asylum sits on the edge of a waterfall. Nick and Hobbs hidden on the side of the road, a spy from a hundred yards away. Nick and Hobbs sneak up to the guard gate where two wolves are stationed. Using the elaborate hand signals, Nick motions he's going to sneak past first. He gets around the gate. As he gets close, a wolf sniffs the air. He's on to him. Nick reaches around and grabs a piece of wood to use as a weapon. Wolf moves towards Nick, but before he reaches him, oh! A distant howl grabs his attention. It's Hops cupping her mouth to make the howl sound distant. Wolf hears it and can't help but howl as well. Another guard, another guard approaches. Gary, quit it! You're gonna start a howl. I didn't start it. More howling on screen. Owl. Owl. More wolves start to howl. Nick looks at Hobbs, impressed. Come on. Nick and Hobbs use the distraction to jump the fence and sneak into the complex. You are a clever bunny. Above, they notice a drainage pipe leading into the building. Interior lifts out a large room moments later. Nick and Hobbs emerge from the drain pipe into the creepy asylum. They're in a large cavernous room full of old medical equipment. It's like a combination of an old hospital and a turn of the century zoo. Looks like this was a hospital. Judy shines her light down a corridor, at the end of which is a metal door with a light shining within. Nick nears the door, about to open it. The tension builds, and then... You know what? After you. You're the cop. Here, close out asylum medical ward moments later. Hobbs cautiously pushes the door open to reveal a room with modern medical equipment. Nick pops up behind her. Okay, all clear. Hobbs rolls her eyes, cautiously enters and looks around. All this equipment is brand new. Carrots. Nick points to the ground, which is up with claw marks. Claw marks? Yeah, huge, huge claw marks. I mean, what kind of? Rah! A savage tiger emerges behind the glass of a nearby cage, starting Nick and sending him running to Hobbs. Hobbs swills her flashlight to reveal dozens of reflective eyes. Nick and Hobbs make their way down a long corridor of cages, looking for the jaguar. Mr. Manches. He is still feral, all fours, pacing in a cell. They continue on, passing three, four, five cages until finally in the last cage, a feral otter. It's Emmett Otterton. It's him. We found our otter. Do the otter gently. Mr. Otterton. My name is Officer Judy Hobbs. My wife sent me to find you. We're going to get you out of here now. Otterton screeches at her and lunges toward the glass. Or not. Because he's in no rush to get home to the missus. Hobbs looks back down. Door of cells counting. 11, 12, 13, 14. Not even conscious. It's 14. Chief Boko handed out 14 missing mammal files. They're all here. All the missing mammals are right here. Before she can respond, they click. A door starts to open. Nick and Hobbs retreat, stuck, stuck next to a dark cell. Enough. I don't want excuses, Doctor. I want answers. Reveal Mayor Lionheart berating the Badger Doctor by his side. He looks serious, tense, tired. Mayor Lionheart, please. We're doing everything we can. Hobbs whips out her phone and starts recording. Really? Because I got a dozen and a half animals who have gone off the rails crazy, and you can't tell me why. Now I'd go that awfully far from doing everything. Sir, it may be time to consider their biology. What? What do you mean, biology? The, the animal? 
animals going savage are predators. We cannot keep it a secret. We need to come forward. <laughs> Great idea. Tell the public. And how do you think they're going to feel about their mayor, who is a lion? I'll be ruined. Well, what does Chief Mogo say? Chief Mogo doesn't know, and we're to keep it that way. Beep, beep, beep. Hob's parents call in. She frantically tries to silence her phone. So what's here? Sir, you need to go now. Calls out security. Sweep the area. An alarm sounds. A door to the cell hops in nicker and trigger shut. They notice wolves approaching. Great. We're dead. We're dead. That's it. I'm dead. You're dead. Everybody's dead. This gives Hop an idea. She looks at the huge toilet. Can you swim? What? Can I swim? Yes, I can swim. Why? The wolves storm in, searching for the intruders, and see the swirling water of a toilet disappearing a tra down a drain. Hops and Nick fly through the water, slide like tubes of the sewer system, cascading over a waterfall. Both scream. They land in the river below. Nick pops up first. He looks desperately for Judy. Garrett's Hops. Judy. She emerges, gasping for breath, holding up the bagged phone. We gotta tell Bogo. Close on Bogo's phone. Oh, interior Bogo's office day. Close on Bogo's phone. Gazelle and Bogo dance on stage. It's the same um, clubhouse you used earlier. Wow, you're one hot dancer, Chief Bogo. Bogo is dancing along when suddenly Clawhauser bursts in. Chief Bogo! No, no! Wait, is that Gazelle struggling to silence his phone? No! I'm Gazelle, and you're one hot answer. You have the app to. Oh, jeez. Clawhauser, can't you see I'm working on the missing mammal cases? Oh, yes, of course. About that, sir. Officer Hobbs just called. She found all of them. Bogo's eyes. Wow, I'm impressed. Exterior asylum day. Car, cop cars and helicopters surround the asylum. Hobbs, flanked by Bogo and other cops, leads Lionheart out of the building. Mayor Lionheart, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you don't understand. I was trying to protect the city. You were just trying to protect your job. No, listen, we still don't know why this is happening. It could destroy Zootopia. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can it will be used against you in a court of law. Nick hangs back, proudly flashing his junior detective badge. <laughs> Interior CPD lobby. Bogo addresses the press. Behind him, posters of the savage animals, each one muzzled. Ladies and gentle mammals, 14 mammals were missing and all 15 have been found by our newest recruit. We will speak to you in a moment, but first, let me remind you. Bogo's voice trails off in the background as Nick and Hobbs watch from the side. Hobby bites her nails, nervous. Ah, I'm so nervous. Okay, press conference 101. If you want to look smart, answer their question with a question with your own question, and then answer that question like this. Excuse me, Officer Hobbs, what can you tell us about the case? Pretending to be Hobbs. Well, was it a tough case? Yes. Yes, it was. You see, you should be there with me. We did this together. Well, am I a cop? No. No, I am not. Funny you should say that, because I've been thinking it would be nice to have a partner. She hands Nick an application, then click. She holds out the care pen to him. Here, in case you need something to write with. At 2200 hours, we found all of these missing animals. Bellwether gestures for Judy to come up. Officer Hobbs, it's time. As Hobbs goes, Nick smiles. He's touched. So now, I'll turn things over to the officer who cracked the case. Officer Judy Hobbs. I'm, I'm doing... Idris Elba a disservice. By the way, every time the, the Bogo lines come up, watch the movie. He does it much better than me. Also, there's like music and stuff in the pictures. It's great, really. I, I literally, it's impulsive to look.
Hobbs takes a deep breath and steps up to the dais. Officer Hobbs, over here. Here. I'm pointing to a report. Uh, yes. What can you tell us about the animals the savage? that went savage? Well, the animals in question, glances at Nick, are they all different species? Yes. Yes, they are. Nick smiles, gives a thumbs up. Okay, so what is the connection? Well, all we know is that they are all members of the Predator family. So, Peters are the only ones going savage. Yes, that is, uh, yes, that is accurate, yes. Wow, why is that happening? We still don't know. Disappointed, rumbling. Trying to appease. Uh, it may have something to do with biology. On Nick. Huh. The press reacts to big time. What do you mean by that? A biological, well, you know, something in their DNA. Or a crescent in their DNA. Can you elaborate on that, please? Yes, what I mean is uh, thousands of years ago, um, predators survived their crescent hunting instincts. For whatever reason, they seem to be reverting back to their primitive, savage ways. Nick doesn't like what he's hearing. Of course they did. Nick looks at the posters of the muzzled animals and shakes his head, disbelief, a flashback to his memory of being muzzled as a child. During flashback, oh, is he gonna cry? Oh, Nick, as flashback ends, Officer Hobbs, could it happen again? Is It is possible, so we must remain vigilant. We at the CPD are prepared and are here to protect you. This sends the press into an absolute frenzy. Will more animals go savage? What is done to protect us? Have you considered a mandatory quarantine on predators? Bellwether steps in, eager to put an end to the question. Okay, thank you, Officer Hobbs. Uh, that's all the time we have. No more questions. Bellwether ushers Hobbs off stage. Was I okay? Oh, you did fine. Hobbs walks across the lobby to Nick, completely unaware that she just started controversy. Excited. <laughs> that was so fast, I didn't get a chance to mention you or say anything about how we... Oh, I think you said plenty. What do you mean? Sarcastic, hard. Clearly, there's a biological component. These predators may, have, may be reverting back to their primitive, savage ways. Are you serious? I just stated the facts of the case. I mean, it's not like a bunny could go savage. Right, but a fox could, huh? Nick, <laughs> stop it. You're not like them. Oh, there's a them now. You know what I mean. You're not that kind of predator. The kind that needs to be muzzled. The kind that makes you think you need to carry around fox repellent. Hop sighs guiltily. Yeah, don't think I didn't notice that little item the first time we met. Escalating anger. So let me ask you a question. Are you afraid of me? Hobbs looks at Do You think I might go nuts? Do you think I might go savage? Do you think I might try to eat you? He lunges like he's going to bite her. She flinches and unthinkingly puts her hand on the repellent. Calm, hurt. I knew it. Just when I thought someone had actually believed in me. He shoves the application at her. Probably best if you don't have a predator as a partner. As he walks away, he takes off the sticker badge, crumples it, and tosses it away. No. Nick. Nick. Officer Hobbs, were you just threatened by that predator? No, he's my friend. We can't even trust our own friends now. That's not what I said. Please, are we safe? Have any other foxes gone savage? No one will listen. Not anymore. Interior News Studio A. Two anchors sit in front of a graphic Dungertown tragedy. All bad news in this city gripped with fear. News footage shows a caribou being loaded into an ambulance. Another shot shows a polar bear and a muscle. Female bobcat news anchor is my favorite character. A caribou is in critical condition. The victim of a balding but a savage polar bear. This, the 27th such attack, comes one week after CPD officer Judy Hobbs connected the violence to traditionally predatory animals. Meanwhile, a peace rally organized by pop star Gazelle was marred by protest. The news story cuts to footage of a protest. Hobbs is caught in the middle of the protest and is trying to separate them. Go back to the forest, predator. I'm from the savannah. Gazelle 
gives a sound bite to a news reporter. Zootopia is a unique place. It's a crazy, beautiful, diverse city. I can't do a Shakira accent either, guys. I'm sorry. Where we celebrate our differences. Gestures to protesters in background. This is not the Zootopia I know. Zell's interview plays as VO, VO over a series of shots. And by, and by Shakira accent, I mean Shakira's voice. I can't do a Shakira impression. That's, that's the word. Impression. I can't do a Idris Elba impression. I can't do a Shakira impression. I can't do any celebrity impressions. I'm sorry. I apologize. Or Marlon Brando. At 78 BPM. Whatever that means. <laughs> Gazelle's interview plays as VO over a series of shots. On a subway, Hobbs watches a mother rabbit bring her child close as a lion gets on the train. The Zootopia I know is better than this. We don't just blindly assign blame. We don't know why these attacks keep happening. In the hospital, Mrs. Otterton watches her husband flail like a madman in a padded room. Judy approaches her. But it is irresponsible to label all predators as savages. That's not my Emmett. On Hobbs, a look of exhaustion and distress. Back on Gazelle's interview. We cannot let fear divide us. Please, give me back the Zootopia I love. Interior CPD office day. The broadcast plays from Hobbs' desk computer as she watches. Boko walks up behind her. Come on, Hobbs. The new mayor wants to see us. The mayor? Why? See for removed. <clears throat> Interior CPD lobby day. Clawhauser sighs and closes his laptop. He loads it into a box on his desk. Box of his desk items. Hobbs enters. Clawhauser, what are you doing? Um, they thought it would be better if a predator such as myself wasn't the first face that you see when you walk into the CPD. What? They're gonna move me to records. It's downstairs. By the boiler. Hobbs' face falls. Boko waits for her in the background. Hops. Off Hobbs' heartbroken look, we match come to close on them. A photo of a smiling Hobbs. Wider to reveal, the photo is on a pamphlet that reads, CPD, Integrity, Honesty, Bravery. Interior, Bellwether's office day. Hobbs looks at the pamphlet. Bellwether sits across from her desk. Um, I don't understand. Our city is 90% prey, Judy, and right now, they're just really scared. You're a hero to them. They trust you, and that's why Chief Bogo and I want you as to be the public face of the CBD. <laughs> like a hiccup situation going on. Bogo sits next to Hobbs. She looks at the pamphlet again, struggling to find words. I'm not, I'm not a hero. I came here to make the world a better place, but I think I broke it. Don't give yourself so much credit, Hobbs. The world has always been broken. That's why we need good cops like you. With all due respect, sir, a good cop is supposed to serve and protect and help the city, not tear it apart. I don't deserve this badge. She removes her badge. Hopes. Judy, you've worked so hard to get here. It's what you've wanted since you were a kid. You can't quit. Thank you for the opportunity. Hobbs sets her badge on the desk and walks out. Bellwether and Boko look at one another in shock and concern. Fade out. Exterior Hobbs farm vegetable stand day. Hobbs, with a thousand yard stare, works the carrot stand. She wraps some carrots in the newspaper. Headline, growing unrest to find the city hands them to a rabbit family. A dozen carrots. Thanks, Mom. Th th thanks, Mom. I'm sorry, I'm getting tired, guys. Thanks. Have a nice day. Ops reads the paper as Stu and Bonnie approach concerned. Hey there, Jude, Jude the Dude. Remember that one? How we doing? I'm fine. You're not fine. You're 
ears are droopy. Pops for me to fix on the newspaper and lets out a sigh. Why did I think I could make a difference? Because you're a trier. That's why. You've always been a trier. Well, I tried. It made life so much worse for so many innocent predators. Off screen. Beep, beep. Oh, not all of them, though. Speak of the devil right on time. A truck pulls up. Its sign reads, Gideon Gray's good baked stuff with fresh produce from Hobbs Family Farms. Is that Gideon Gray? Yep, it sure is. We work with him now. He's our partner, and we would never have considered it had you not opened our minds. That's right. I... Kids turned into one of the top pastry chefs in the tri -Burrows. That's really cool, you guys. Gideon Gray now punchy climbs out of his truck. Gideon Gray, I'll be darned. Hey, Judy, I'd like to say that I'm sorry for the way I behaved in my youth. I had a lot of self-doubt that manifested itself in the form of unchecked rage and aggression. I was a major jerk. Well, I know a thing or two about being a jerk. Anyhow, I brought you all these pies. He holds out some pies. Kid bunnies come tearing across the field, beelining for the pies. Stu shouts to the kids. Hey kids, don't you run through that minty camp of polycythicus. Polycythicus. Rabbit kid holding back the others. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now that's a four dollar word, Mr. H. My family just all oh, my family always just called them night howlers. Wait, what? I'm sorry, what did you say? Stu gestures to the flowers growing at the edge of the crops. Oh, kids talking about those flowers, Judy. I use them to keep bugs off the produce, but I don't like the little ones going near them on account of what happened to your Uncle Terry. Yeah, Terry ate one whole when we were kids and went completely nuts. Bit the dickens out of your mother. The funny kid go savage. We stay on Hobbs as she pieces it together. Savage, well, that's a strong word, but it did hurt like the devil. Well, sure it did. There's a sizable divot in your arm. I'd call that savage. As if doing an equation. The owlers aren't wolves. They're flowers. The flowers are making the predators go savage. That's it. That's what I've been missing. Hops races away, then turns back. Oh, keys, 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 keys. Hurry. Come on. Thank you. I love you. Bye. Stu tosses her the keys to his pickup. Hops jumps into the truck, peels out, leaving Stu and Bonnie in the dust. You catch any of that, Bon? Not one bit. Well, that makes me feel a little better. I thought she was talking in tongues or something. I can do a southern accent, though, because I am from Florida. Central Florida, to be exact. Alright. Exterior Zootopia, Sahara Square Street. Hops drives the farm truck to Phoenix Van. She knocks. Who is it? I need to find Nick. Please. Phoenix gives her a reluctant look, then softens. Exterior bridge. Later, Hop arrives at an underpass. She looks around. It's a sad, it's a desolate, sad place. Nick, Nick, there's Nick sitting on a lawn chair under the bridge. Oh, Nick, night owlers aren't wolves. They're toxic flowers. I think someone's targeting predators on purpose and making them go savage. Wow, isn't that interesting? He gets up, walks under the bridge. He follows. Wait, wait, please. I know you'll never forgive me, and I don't blame you enough to forgive me either. I was ignorant and irresponsible and small-minded, but predators shouldn't suffer because of my mistakes. I have to fix this, but I can't do it without you. He sighs, but still won't look at her. Get emotional, and after we're done, you can hate me, and that'll be fine, because I was a horrible friend, and I hurt you. You can walk away knowing you were right all along. I really am just a dumb bunny. It seems she lost him then. I really am just a dumb bunny. I really am just a dumb bunny. Hobbs cocks her head. Huh? Nick turns to her, holding her recording pen. Don't 
don't worry, carrots. I'll let you erase it in 48 hours. Hop sniffles and wipes a tear from her eye. All right, get in here. Hop leans her head on Nick's chest. He gives her a hug. Okay. Oh, you bunnies, you're so emotional. There we go. Deep breath. Are you just trying to steal the pen? Is that what this is? You're standing on my tail. Off, off, off. I'm sorry. Interior Hobbs family truck moments later. Hobbs drives as Nick misses a shotgun eating blueberries. I thought you guys only grew carrots. Then eats. What's the plan? We're gonna follow the night howlers. Okay, how? Shows picture weasel. Know this guy? Uh-uh. He told you. I know everybody. Exterior Zootopia Street later. We find the weasel selling crappy knockoff merchandise on a street corner. Well, hello. Step right up. Anything you need, I got it. All your favorite movies. I got movies that haven't even been released yet. An armadillo customer <laughs> scans an array of bleeding knockoff movies like Rick and Rhino, Wrangled, and Pig Hero 6. Hey, 50% off. Want make me an offer? Come on. Suddenly appearing. Well, well, look who it is. The Duke of Bootleg. What's it to you, Wild? Shouldn't you be melting down a popsicle or something? Sees Hobbs. Hey, if it isn't a flop, say the cops. Say. We both know those weren't only onions I caught you stealing. What were you going to do with those night hours, Weaselton? It's Weaselton. Duke Weaselton. And I ain't talking rabbit. You ain't gonna make me. You ain't. Ain't nothing you can do to make me. Now such a hard mind. Weasel then flicks it to pick her face. Hop smiles at Nick. Interior Mr. Biggs plays a little later. We find polar bears holding the weasel over the ice pit. Ice him! It's harsh, I'm sorry, guys. A little bit of mucus got in my throat or something. I messed my headphones up. <clears throat> to make you dirty rat why you helping her she's a cop and the godmother to my future granddaughter can't I just get the reveal Fru Fru is pregnant I'm gonna name her Judy Oh, the polar bears nice this weasel Alright, alright, please. I'll knock, I knock. I stole them night hours so I could sell them. They offered me what I couldn't refuse. Money. And to whom did you sell them? Duke was pre-lab. Was pre-lab. Uh -huh. A ram named Doug. We got a drop spot underground. Exterior subway station a little later. Nick and Hobbs approach an abandoned subway station. Just watch it. Doug is the opposite of friendly. He's unfriendly. They arrive at the entrance and quickly sneak under the gate. Interior abandoned subway station. Moments later, they emerge on a platform and spot an abandoned subway car. Come on! As they sneak up to it, Hobbs pulls open the window and looks inside the car. They both jump into interior of the greenhouse car continuous. They both see them. So night howlers. The weasel wasn't lying. Yeah, looks like old Doug is cornered in market on night howlers. Click. A door opens off screen. They quickly hide under the desk as a tough sheep lab worker enters. He goes through the process of harvesting the pollen, eventually producing a small blue pink ball pellet of night howler toxin. Nick and Hobbs watch it all. The sheep's phone rings. You got Doug here. What's the mark? Cheetah in Zara Square. Got it. The sheep loads a gun, cocks it. We see a map with pictures of various animal targets. Into phone. Serious? Yeah, I know they're fast. I can hit him. Listen, I hit a tiny little otter through the open window of a moving car. Hearing the 
as if the pieces of the puzzle start falling into place for Hobbs, she looks up at the picture of Otterton. We flash back to see Doug hitting him with a syrup pellet. Then Hobbs look at Machis' picture. We flash back to that. Into phone. Yeah, I'll buzz you when it's done. Or you'll see it on the news. You know, whichever comes first. Bam, bam, bam. The goons have returned. Hey, Doug, open up. We got your locked egg. All right, Walter and Jesse are back, so I'm leaving now. Ow. Hops looks around. What is she going to do? As Doug goes to the door to unlock it, Hops creeps out of their hiding spot. Hey, hey, where are you going? Get back here. What are you doing? They're going to see you. What are you looking at? Hey, what are you thinking? Stop thinking it. Carrots. Carrots. They better have extra foam this time. Bam. Hops kicks Walter in the back, knocking him into the other two thugs. Hops locks the door. Hey, open up. The thugs start banging on the doors. What are you doing? You just trapped us in here. We need to get this evidence to the CPD. Nick points out the ca- picks up the case. Okay, great. Here it is. Got it. No, no, all of it. Wait, what? Hops rushes to the control room, tries to start the engine. Great, you're a conductor now. Hey, listen, it would take a miracle to get this rust bucket going. The train starts moving. Well, I'll let you. Interior train tracks, same. On the phone, we kind of got a situation at the lab. Noticing train. Oh, it just got worse. Duck his minions race out of the train. Back to interiors of Wigar, same. Nick and Hobbs race away, feeling fairly confident. Mission accomplished. Would it be a little premature, premature for me to do a little victory? Two, two. All right. One, two, two. Nick blows the train whistle. Well, you can cross that off the booking list. Things are looking up when, bam, Walter just busted into the car. Nick slams the door closed right before Walter gets to them. I may have to rescind that victory. Two, two. Noise from the roof above them. Then, bam, bam, bam. Maybe it's just the hail. Sorry, maybe it's just the hail. Uh oh. Jesse busts through the window. He's stuck, flailing at Hops. Nick tries to pull away from him. Back off. Nick gets punched backwards and misses Walter charging toward the door at full speed. Right before Walter arrives, Nick pulls the door open. Incoming. Walter's Bamera momentum carries him into Jesse, dislodging him onto the tracks. Hobbs is knocked out of the window, but grabs onto Walter's horn. Hobbs tries to tri- hang on as the subway car hurtles down the tunnel. Carrots. <laughs> to Nick, don't stop. Don't st- keep going. Jesse, about to be run over. No, no, please stop. Do not stop this car. Jesse dives to safety and Hobbs gets bucked up onto the top of the train. Nick takes the wheel as the train emerges above ground. Hobbs looks up to see another train coming toward them on the same track. She sees a turn-off switch ahead. Speed up, Nick, speed up. There's another train coming. Trust me, speed up. Walter sees the train coming and tries to get unstuck, but he can't. He struggles like crazy. Stop the train. Hey. Then, at the last second, Hobbs appears next to him. Hey. Need some help. Hobbs kicks Walter off the train and he lands perfectly on the turn off switch on the tracks below. At the last possible second, their train switches tracks, just avoiding the oncoming car. Except. Oh no, no, no! Too fast! Hold on! Train derails as it takes the curve. The night howlers catch fire. I think this is our stop. Hobbs and Nick dive out of the car and onto the subway platform just as the lab car explodes. Okay, maybe some of the evidence survived. A second loud explosion, the train is destroyed. Everything's gone. We lost it all. Yeah. Oh, except for this. Nick holds up a case containing a gun and a pellet. Oh, Nick, yes! Judy smacks him on the arm, hard. Nick grimaces. Ow! Come on, we gotta get to the CBD. Cut through the Natural History Museum. Interior Natural History Museum, night. Nick and Hobbs race 
breaks through the empty museum. The sea pediatrics is just ahead. Oh, there it is. They're going to make it. Judy, Judy, Judy and Nick turn to stop. Stop and turn. There's Bellwether standing behind them with two ram alps. Mayor Bellwether, out of breath rapidly, we found out what's happening. Someone's darting predators with a serum. That's what's making them go savage. I am applauding. I am so proud of you, Judy. You did us a super job. Thank you, ma'am. Troubling realization. How did you know where to find us? I'll go ahead and I'll take that case now. You know what? I think Nick and I will just take this to the CPD. Ops turns towards the CPD. Uh-oh, one of Bellwether's ramps is blocking the way. Nick just now gets what's going on. Run, run! They take off, away from the CPD, down a dark ford. Get them! Hobbs looks over her shoulder as she runs, not seeing a sharp woolly mammoth tusk sticking out. It slashes her leg, knocking her off her feet. Ack! Ah, carrots! Nick goes to her. Her leg is bleeding badly. I gotcha. Come here, come here. He carries her behind a pillar. Okay, now just relax. Nick digs a handkerchief from his pocket. A few blueberries fall out. Whoops. Blueberry. Pass. Come on out, Judy. Take the case. Get it to Bogo. I'm not going to leave you behind. That's not happening. I can't walk. Well, just, we'll just think of something. Bellwether finally appears, flanked by the rams. We're on the same team, Judy. With Bellwether and the thugs, Bellwether talks as they look for Hobbs and Nick. Underestimated, underappreciated. Aren't you sick of it? Predators, they may be loud and strong, but prey outnumber predators ten to one. Funnily enough, um, I don't know if this is intentional to make it like seem like Bellwether's like stupid, or if they just like messed it up. But okay, like right here, Bellwether sees a shadow. Rabbit ears. She gestures to the Rams. There they are. Think of it. Ninety percent of the population united against a common enemy will be unstoppable. So earlier she said, like. Nine out of ten are prey animals. And then she says, prey outnumber predators ten to one. And then she says 90%. So I think she's kind of just like throwing out numbers randomly. And why? I literally am looking at myself looking over here. <laughs> Again, I don't know if that's just like, I think she's just like throwing out numbers. And I think she's supposed to be like funny because she's just like making shit. Making stuff up. Sorry, I'm trying not to curse. Wonder how many times I've I've said the F word. Hopefully not too many. The Rams are about to pounce on Hops and Nick, only to find that the shadows come from a mummified jackalope being illuminated by a shop light. To goons over there. Hops and Nick are making a run for it. They're going to make it to the CPD when suddenly, bam, a ram tackles them both, knocking the case out of Nick's paws. Both of them fall into a sunken diorama. Bellwether, with case in hand, looks over the edge. Well, you should have stayed on the Kara farm, huh? It really is too bad. I really did like you. What are you going to do? Kill me? Of course not. He is. Bellwether takes the dark gun out of case, aims at Nick, and thwack, she darts him. No, Nick! Nick starts to shake and crouch. Bellwether dials the phone. Yes, please, there's a savage fox in the Natural History Museum. Officer Hobbs is down. Please hurry. Nick is starting to turn. No, Nick, don't do this. Fight it. Oh, but he can't help it, can he? Since pricks are just biologically predisposed to be savages. Nick stalks Hobbs, who tries to limp away. Gosh, think of the headline. Hero cop killed by savage fox. So that's it. Prey fears predator and you stay in power. Yeah, pretty much. It won't work. Fear always works. And I'll dart every predator in Zootopia to keep it that way. 
as Nick stalks her. Oh, Nick, no. Bye-bye, bunny. Nick lunges. He attacks. Hop screams. Bellwether smiles. Blood, 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 and death. Bellwether looks confused. Nick stands up. All right, you're milking it. Besides, I think we got it. I think we got it. We got it up there. Thank you, Yaggity Yag. You laid it all out beautifully. What? Bellwether looks at her gun in disbelief. Yeah. Oh, are you? Where's the serum? Holds it up. Well, it's right here. What you've got there. What you've got in the weapon there. Those are blueberries from my family's farm. Livid, Bellwether sees a blueberry in the gun's chamber. They are delicious. You should try some. I frame my own heart. I can frame you too. It's my heart against yours. Oh, actually, Zootopia holds up the carrot pen. Zootopia holds up the carrot pen. Hops holds up the carrot pen. And I'll dart every predator in Zootopia to keep it that way. It's your against yours. It's called the Hustle Sweetheart. Boom. Boko and a team of cops burst onto the scene. Bellwether looks to took us to run, but there's nowhere to go. She's nailed. Cut to interior news studio day. A predator prey team news team reads the headlines. Footage shows Bellwether being led to jail in cuffs and in orange jumpsuit. Former uh, uh, sorry, former mayor Don Bellwether is behind bars today, guilty of masterminding the savage attacks that have plagued to debut of late. Her predecessor Theodore Lionheart denies any knowledge of her plot, claiming he was just trying to protect the city. A feline reporter, Kitty Cowlick, interviews Lionheart. Did I falsely imprison those animals? Oh, yes. Yes, I did. It was a classic doing the, doing the wrong thing right for you kind of deal. Back to the news desk. In related news, doctors say that Nyala antidote is proving effective in rehabilitating the affected predators. Interior hospital room day. Mr. Otterton wakes up in the arms of his wife. Emmett. Oh, Emmett. She hugs him and he holds her tight. We pull back to reveal Hops in the room, watching the reunion. To Hops. Thank you. Exterior Zootopia Central Plaza day. Hops walks through the Central Plaza of Zootopia. She looks around to see animals back together. She focuses on two kids, one prey, one prey playing soccer. When I was a kid, I thought Zootopia was this perfect place where everyone got along and anyone could be anything. Hobbs kicks the soccer ball with the kids. Turns out, life's a little bit more complicated than a slope on a bumper sticker. Real life is messy. At the CPD, Hobbs entered a f enters to find Klohauser back at his desk, unpacking. What's more, two cops approach him with donuts. We all have limitations. We all just all make mistakes, which means, hey, glass half full, we all have a lot in common. And the more we try to understand one another, the more exceptional each of us will be. But we have to try. Exterior Cadet Training Grounds Day. Reveal Hobbs is giving a commencement address to the graduates of the police academy. So no matter what type of animal you are, from the biggest elephant to our first fox, Reveal, Nick is a cadet. He removes his shades, winks at Hobbs. I implore you, try. Try to make the world a better place. On stage, Hobbs readies to pin a badge on Nick. As she approaches, they exchange a nod, a small, sincere gesture. She places the badge, then gives Nick an official salute. Look inside yourself and recognize that change starts with you. It starts with me. It starts with all of us. Gaps are thrown in the air. The music fades out, leaving just the applause, which is interrupted by... All right, all right. Cut to interior CPD pen day. Hops and Nick. Oops, I'm sorry. Hops and Nick, now, now in uniform, sit together among CPD's finest. Oko stands at the podium. Enough. Shut it. We have some new recruits with us this morning, including our first folks. Who cares? You should have your own line of inspirational greeting cards, sir. Shut your mouth, Wild. Assignments. Officers Grisoli, Fangmire, Delgato. Tundra Town, Swat. Wait. Yeah, Tundra Town, Swat. Starla, Higgins, Walford. Undercover. Hops. Wild. Give anticipation. Parking duty. Dismissed. Just kidding. We have reports of a street racer tearing up Savannah Central. Find him. Shut him down. Interior 
exterior cop car driving shots today. Hops drive, snake rides shotgun eating a popsicle. So, are all rabbits bad drivers, or is it just you? She slams on the brakes. He lurches forward, accidentally jamming the popsicle into his face. Oops, sorry. As he wipes off his face. Sly bunny. Dumb fox. You know you love me. Do I know that? Yes. Yes, I do. They smile wide. They, they stopped at a red light. When suddenly, a tricked-out red sports car blasts through the light. They look at each other and smile even wider. Hops stomps on the gas. Nick hits the siren. The patrol car takes off. Exterior streets of Zootopia moments later. The fleeing sports car comes into almost a screeching halt. Ankle on the license plate. Fast animal. FSD NML. Hops and Nick exit their car and approach the driver. Sir, you were going 115 miles per hour. I hope you have a good explanation. But when they get to the driver's window, flash, flash, 100 yard dash. Yup, it's Flash the Sloth. Nick. Cut to black. V. Well, give me a second before I do this outro. <sighs> okay, that is it, guys. I mean, that's 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 a wrap. Um, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching, and I I am genuinely so so grateful to stick around for something like this and if you're just skipping to the end that's cool too i don't know you're interested that's that's awesome this is something that i don't know it just seemed really fun to make and i can admit i did have a really good time even though this is like a three hour video and my voice is not going to work tomorrow and my jaw hurts, and my face hurts, but that's okay, because we all had a good time, and I guess that's it, I guess it's, it's just that we had a good time, I think everyone had a good time, and I don't know, maybe like, you fell asleep or whatever, uh, it's like, I like to just do things that I think are fun and are interesting. So if you know if you think this is fun, interesting, awesome. If not, try to maybe stick around anyway, because I'm sure I'll do something different next time. It's an eclectic mix. If you've not visited the channel before, you'll find that it's an eclectic mix. And it is very infrequent, so I won't be you know blowing up your inbox, but when you see it you can be like check that out that's kind of that's kind of, that's kind of interesting that's kind of fun that's kind of sick um i think the film has a very good message and i do think you should go watch the film uh, even after watching this video or or watch the film first either one I don't, I don't think it matters what order, but I do think the film has a very good message, and I think that it's important for everyone to remember that even though it's a kid's movie, uh, we can, we all can learn something from this. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very thinly veiled, uh, metaphor in a lot of different ways for issues that do continue to, uh, plague society. Not just in America, but everywhere, and on different levels. So, um, try to take the message to heart. Um, and, and I think it's very serendipitous. And by serendipitous, I mean I planned it. I was on those wings never plan all along for me to release this uh, during the month of June. And, uh, <laughs> so, treat everyone kindly and you gotta try everyone just try to make the world a better place like judy said and maybe it'll work out so no matter what 
I think that's it. I think I'm done preaching now. Happy Pride. <laughs>